Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're talking about laptops with a target price of $1,600. We're starting to get into a no man's land. At $1,200, we saw that we were able to get Ryzen 4800H. We were able to get a 2060. Well, when you step up around $1,600, you're not really getting towards that 2070, except for in one or two cases, and that's stretching it, and you're not really getting any better than a 4800H. So it's a tough spot to be, and you have to look for the extras. Is it a 4K screen? Does it have Thunderbolt? Does it have USB Type-C, Gen 1 or 2? What's the story here? So that is what we're going to look at and find out if we've got any gems in here. Let's jump into it. As always, I've made this study guide available to all of my supporters over on Buy Me A Coffee. So if you're interested in the guide, jump on over, buy me any amount of coffee, and you're in. I will send you this study guide. Thank you for watching. Let's go check out the laptops. Here we are again with the John Scale, top of the line, fair to middle and in for real, top, middle, and bottom. We'll move these up as things get better, and as always, there's no arguing. It's John Scale. I get to call it like I see it. I'm going to talk to you about screen resolution. 4K is better. Processor, we're looking at 6 or 8 cores, prefer the 8. GPU, raw power, 2060, 2070 is kind of where we want. Head on up, 2070 gives you 8 gigabytes of video RAM rather than 6, and that's a big win. Usability and price, I'll give you my rationale. They're highly subjective. Here we go. Coming in with the first laptop, 2560 by 1600 resolution, we have an Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. This is specifically the GA41 IV-BR9 N6. And it is probably one of the better SKUs for this uh, Zephyrus G14 laptop. This one is a 4900 HS. Let's remember the S means that they've suppressed the TDP or total draw of power. So it doesn't quite use as much power as the normal 4900 H would. However, it still gives you eight cores and individual cores can boost quite well. It has 16 gigabytes, 32 megahertz DDR4 RAM. You can only go up to 24. And if I had to knock this laptop for something, it's likely that. Uh, the 2060, the RTX 2060 that's in it, has 6 gigabytes of video RAM. It's the Max-Q variant. And that, very much like the S on the processor, means they've knocked back the power consumption to make it more efficient for your laptop. Finally, round it out with a 1 terabyte SSD. There we go. That is for only $1,449. Now, I could be really thrilled about this if it weren't for the little brother the Asus Tough, which gives you a 4800 with 8 gigabytes and a 2060, but it does only have a 512 gigabyte hard drive. So our winner from last episode matches up against this. The big tipping point towards this one, though, has got to be the 2560 by 1600 screen. Uh, this, this becomes a very real option. Color accuracy, probably not great. You're looking at sRGB. But, hey, budget really pretty kick butt laptop we're there next up again we're targeting sixteen hundred dollars but i took some liberties where i saw value one of the things that i've had a lot of questions on is hey john the asus zenbook with the geforce mx 250 what do you think uh i i can't think of a worse laptop to try and edit video on this one here, we're going to pop the U in there. That means ultra book. So that processor is intended for the thin and slim laptops. It has four cores, 1.8 gigahertz base and 4.9 gigahertz boost, 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM. And the real reason I dislike this thing, the GeForce MX250 4 gigabyte graphics card has a one terabyte SSD. Notice this thing has two screens. Yeah, that is a giant screen. It's a touch panel, too, so you can touch it, you can select things, and when there's programming for it, it's going to be amazing. When you tie it up as your second screen and you try and manage specific windows, it's yet to be determined, and it'll be on an app-by-app -app basis how well it works. Asus will throw in some uh, kind of expose, if you've seen the Mac OS, some sort of program selector, app selector type touch screen here. Um, that looks like they've skinned Windows Media Player to be able to throw it down in this window. 
And I'm sure we can use it in Resolve as a second screen. I'm absolutely certain we can in Premiere Pro. However, uh, I don't know that the MX250 is your friend when trying to power this plus this. It's going to be too much for this thing. Now this is a full HD panel on the top and less than that on the bottom, but still, this is gonna be painful. So I worry about that. I worry about um, longevity of the screen and how well it'll work, who knows, probably great. But finally, when we get to usability, the real problem I've got is that the trackpad's over here on the right. What about all my left-handed friends? What are they gonna do, huh? I assume we expect that they'd use an external mouse, but hmm, I don't know. Finally, the price at $1,472, this is hardware that belongs in a $750 Ultrabook. Like, no, you are paying $500 easily for this second screen, and it's not worth it. They have some models above this that we'll talk about in future episodes, and those have better hardware in them. More excited about those. This one, not my friend. Do not stretch to get into a editing work laptop type situation and stretch into it for this two screen situation. You're shooting yourself in the foot where we should be spending money here and here. All right, next laptop. We have a Gigabyte Aorus 5 15.6 Full HD 144 Hertz Gaming Notebook Computer. And yes, I do have to give you the full title because that's the only way this thing's known. It has a 10 750H hexa-core, 2.6 gigahertz base, 5 gigahertz boost laptop chip. It's the new 10th generation from Intel with 16 gigabytes of 2933 megahertz RAM. A great thing about this laptop, it can go up to 64 gigabytes. You've got an RTX 2060 running 6 gigabytes of GDDR6. Hey, not mad at that. Now, what's exciting to me about this thing, the, the price is at 1500 bucks. Intel has had to lower the prices on their laptop chips. The new 4000 series from AMD has put price pressure on Intel, and Intel's chips are dropping like a rock. You will find, currently, 9750 and 8750 powered laptops still on the market, marked down from their MSRP for more than the current generation. That's how far they've had to drop the prices due to the performance from AMD. Now, this one has 16 gigabytes. As I said, I love the Mac 64 in it. A 2060, not mad at it. 1500 bucks. I don't know that you can beat this. It's a six core processor, solid processor, same architecture they've had for a couple generations. Uh, it does have a 1920 by 1080 screen. Um, not crazy about that. The GPU is good enough. I'm happy about that. But the usability gets hit by the screen. Um, maybe by the two extra cores if you're running either Premiere Pro or if you're running Resolve Free Edition. You'd prefer to have two more cores. Finally, a price. Yeah, it's 1500 bucks, and I'm glad that Intel's dropped their pricing, but the capability that this laptop gives me doesn't quite get me there for that price. Next, we're looking at the HP Omen laptop. HP Omen 17 CB1097NR. It again is a full HD display, which will hurt it. 16 gigabytes, 2933 with the same 10 750H processor. It's got a, wait a minute, this is the same stupid laptop. That's right, you will run into the same stupid laptop over and over and over again. And that same stupid laptop from different manufacturers. This one got a different case, uh, but it's the same parts inside. Therefore, it has pretty much the same usability, same uh, exact situation. Except for this one is $15.99. This is why it pays to shop around a little bit. Understand your laptop components and look around. Here's another example where that one was, what, $86 more here for this one. But this one you get a 10875. That should be 10th generation. There we go. You get a 10875 8-core processor. That's much more interesting, especially for Resolve Free and Premiere Pro users. 16 gigabytes of 2666 memory. And, oh, what's this? An RTX 2070 Super. Whew. That means we get 8 gigabytes of video memory. We get more CUDA cores, and we are really rocking over that 2060. Finally, a 1 terabyte NVMe SSD. This starts to look like a very enticing laptop, especially since it has Thunderbolt connectivity. All right, that's exciting for me if I want to run extra monitors, or if I have a Thunderbolt hard drive or even a USB Type-C hard drive, that thing should really move. Now, the one drawback is, again, the screen. It's a full HD screen, and it reaches 100% of the sRGB color space. Well, that sounds good, right? Well, no, that's 72% of the NTSC color space, 
and it's less than that of the Adobe RGB space. So this is not going to be extremely color accurate. It's not gonna carry all the colors and give you the saturation you might want while you're editing video or photos. However, uh, the price, the capability, this one's a real contender as a winner. Let's jump in real quick. We need to start to talk about color space. I had a comment in the last video. Somebody asked me, what about color accuracy? Well, that's exactly what we need to talk about now. Prior to this, you're not seeing many laptops that have any amount of color accuracy I'd get happy about. Almost all of them are at the baseline, which would be SRG sRGB. Now, sRGB is about 72% of the standard NTSC color space. What that means is 72% of what gets broadcast inside the standard definition TVs. Yeah, that's your color space. Above that, you've got Adobe RGB, and that is a defined standard from 1998 that defines a certain number of colors that should be able to be shown. That's going to give you better saturation, a better look, and really, if your display can display that, you're creating for people. So you're creating for people who are likely viewing on that, or if on their phones, even better, because many of these phones have OLED screens, which gives a true contrast, and it's beautiful. So let's be aware of that when we're shopping for our laptops. I'll start to call it out as laptops go above and beyond the standard sRGB which again is like 72% of NTSC and a little bit less than that of Adobe RGB. And now we've got the LG Ultra PC 17 inch lightweight and high performance laptop. This one, interesting, 2560 by 1600. Okay, I'm not mad at it. 10th generation Intel i7 10 510U, oh boy, Ultrabook quad core processor, 1.8 gigahertz base, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I like it, a 1650. Not mad at it. And a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Now, I'm happy about it because of the screen. I get a little bit more room to work in, but I'm not thrilled about the quad-core Ultrabook processor. The GPU is not matching up to the 2060 we've seen or even the 2070 Super we just saw for $50 less. Usability, better because of the screen, worse because of the processor. And price, you can't justify this at this price. I can have a very similar experience around the $1,000 or $1,100 price range with the quad-core Ultrabooks. In fact, I can beat it with the winner from our last episode. And now we're going to fail a stupid test on behalf of Gigabyte. Check this out. Gigabyte Aorus. Wait a minute. It's a gaming notebook. Sweet gamers. It's probably got some RGB. In fact, it probably does, and I bet you could uh, charge a little extra for that. And that used to be the way that the laptop and where generally entire computer industry operated. Throw a gamer tag on it, throw some colored lights, and charge extra. However, we're past that. It's 2020 and the world's upside down, so let's do this. Let's call it a creator edition. Therefore, we're going to call it an arrow. So, okay, so we got the Oris for $14.99, and we got the $16.99 arrow. Let's figure out what's different between these two. Hold, hold on. Nothing is different. Not a stupid thing. You've got a 1920 by 1080 screen. You got a 512 gigabyte SST. You got 2060. You got a 29. Same thing everywhere. You just charge $200 more of it because you're marketing it towards creative folks. Wow. That's painful. So I'd skip the gigabytes for now. Uh, there are some coming up in the future that are worth the money. Neither of these are. Now we've got a MSI stealth gaming laptop. It's a 10th gen 8 core processor, 16 gigabytes, 2060, 512. This is, this is starting to sound quite familiar. Um, it's the same exact thing we're seeing with the hexacore here, six cores. We go up to eight cores for 50 bucks. Maybe it's worth it to you. At this resolution, I'm still not buying the laptop. Okay, John, you care about resolution so much. Show me a 4K laptop can do. Here's the MSI 14-inch Prestige 14 laptop. It has a screen resolution of whoo, 3840 by 2160p. I am thrilled about that. And it's a 10th gen Intel i7. Oh, good lord. All right. Well, I mean, it's got six cores, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 16 gigabytes, very slow DDR3 RAM. That's going to be the laptop variant. And then GTX 1650 with four for $1,700. I really don't want to give up that much performance at that price just to get the 4K screen. Sure, I can see more stuff on the screen, 
but it's much more painful to use. So marks up here on usability for the screen, drop down for the pain. Um, this one also happens to have great connectivity, which makes me happy, and it should at this price. Moving on, we've got Digital Storm, yet another one of those custom PC fabricators that's gotten into the laptop game. I like this one. It's an 8-core, 16 gigabytes, 2070 with an NVMe SSD. No apologies for this one. It does have the same panel that's on the CyberStorm, at least the specs are, uh, on the CyberPower, I should say. And uh, generally, it's going to have the same appreciation curve in terms of how much I appreciate it. Going further, we've got the Legion 7i15 with G-Sync. You know, 91YTO0002 US, that one. However, check this out. It has 100% of the Adobe RGB color space in its 1920 by 1080 panel. You can see how that starts to cost a little bit more. I did have to custom configure this one with what they call the G-Sync monitor. It's a 500 nit monitor, but that's how you get the right color space. I want to demonstrate to you what that looked like and that looks like here an 8-core RTX 2060 based system with 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. If you're doing serious content creation, this one is not a bad choice at all. Um, it does have that 1080p screen, which would drive me up the wall. But uh, for many people who work on that day in and day out, that would not be a problem. And then finally, we've got... What? Nothing exciting. Why is this $1,900? Oh, it's last year's processor. So as I was saying earlier, last year's processors still have their starting sticker price on them. This one was actually discounted, I think about 300 bucks. It's 16 gigabytes of 2666 RAM. It has uh, RTX 2060 in it, 512 gigabyte SSD, six core. Great, but why is it so expensive? And that's really the moral of this. This is why it's kind of a no man's land. You can get towards some of the niceties, but you don't break far enough away from the $1,400 laptop or the $1,300 laptop to make it worth stepping up to these laptops. That said, if you have to, you have money burning a hole in your pocket, I would opt for one of the 8-core 10850Hs. I'd find one that possibly has either the 2060 or the 2070 in it, depending on your price, and the connectivity options for each of the laptops. So here's a pretty decent option, I think. It's a 2070 Super. has Thunderbolt. It is a 10875 with 8 cores. It is 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte NVMe drive. The only thing that kills me about this is that monitor. So if you've got an external monitor you're going to hook it up to, I got a Hound Dog Mech. Great viewer. Really into it, really uh, comments often, really appreciate his input. He's got two giant TVs sitting on the wall next to his computer, and if it had a 17-inch monitor, it'd probably be a winner for him. In fact, if you're planning to run this with an external monitor, this would be your winner. Otherwise, we're going to go all the way back to the Asus G14 at the beginning with the 2560 by 1600 screen. That one is my winner of the episode. So thank you for watching. I appreciate every one of you looking at this. If you've got any questions about the laptops, hit me up in the comments. If you've got a favorite laptop I haven't looked at, or if you have some comments about why I'm wrong with your particular laptop, let me know. Many of these I haven't gotten my hands on. I have for several, but I'd like to know what you think about it. So, as always, you can get the study guide over at Buy Me a Coffee. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.